Welcome back to a Titanovix deck tech video. Uh, I had a really fun idea, and uh, I'm gonna take one of my like favorite archetypes, which is mutate, and and make like a five color list mutate. <laughs> I was thinking like, God, I love I love like my mutate decks, and and it seems people really like those too. And I was thinking, man, there's so many like, if we get all the mutate things together, you know, we're gonna probably have a good time, right? So what I've done mostly here is I've kind of like already got like kind of a preliminary list of mutate. I want to kind of put it in this first sliver shell because it's just a five color commander. And it's just a very good commander on its own. So there's the first sliver. It's Cascade, Sliver Spells, you cost half Cascade. So we won't be really making slivers really too much in this deck. We'll just be using it for its Cascade, which is fine. But, uh, I mean, we do have kind of all the mutate things here. I always like this one in the Ikoria standard where, you know, you mutate on this thing and you just start killing stuff. I always like the Zagos Mamba as, like, that one spot. And I, I even think we're running enough mutate cards where Polywalk Symbiote kind of gets a little bit better, too, actually. So, um, I kind of, like, have... Um, I, I mean, we get to play some really nice mutate cards here. We have, like, access to all the... You know, really nice green ones, of course, like the rampy ones, like Migratory Greathorn, which is good. And then you have your low mutate cards, like like a Lord Dracus, where these are just so exceptional where they have a low mutate cost. The lower the mutate cost can sometimes make the difference of why you'd put in that particular card over another. So you'll see, you'll notice like cards like Lord Dracus to mutate for that. Parcel Beast, low mutate. Now you want low mutates because you want to kind of like have as many mutates as possible. Um, of course, though, we still are going to have, like, the big bombs, you know. We're still going to have, like, those five mana mutates, the some of those six mana mutates as well. So, I mean, I think we have a really good kind of, um, you know, oh, Gem Razor, of course, is very good, too. I think we have, like, a good kind of, like, you know, mixture of, you know, low mutates versus maybe some more value-orientated ones. Of course, I think the Auspicious Sterix is probably your best bet for um, when you're really kind of popping off with your mutate cards. Uh, we can kind of like look at the other ones and kind of like deliberate. Basically, like the cards like the Huntmaster Liger and the Volpiki, they just make it because their mutate cost is low. Cubordon is a little bit harder. Um, I mean, it is definitely a payoff. I mean, I mean, and if we're gonna go for it, we should just might as well probably just play all of them, right? That are semi decent. So let's give up Cubordon a chance. Um, I even got Dirge Bat in there. Sorry, a little bit sensitive here on the scrolling. Okay, there we go. So yeah, we got all of these guys in here, and I crafted everything, mutate um, orientated. So, so we got all these guys in there. So that's nice. We got in some of the red ones. I just, I mean, the phoenix doesn't really have any. We don't. We're not going to play any other phoenixes in the deck. I guess the Glowstone Recluse can make it too, just because it has a semi-lower mutate cost. Um, and, oh man, this is a nice addition too, like the Necropanther, so that's kind of a fun one for us. So it just return something for your graveyard, a creature card right from your graveyard to the battlefield, that's kind of fun. Um, you know, we'll probably go Landfall. You know, that's kind of like where my kind of bread and butter for it. This deck is so like we play like Omnath and we play our big other payoffs like IV and such. We can even play the new bird Nadu. So um, I this one see like the trumpeting Nar. It's just too high of a mutate cost for what it does. It just creates a beast token, so it's not really my my preference there. So that's why it doesn't really go in. Um, other than that, I feel like pretty fine with all this. This seems very good. So um, just some things I like to start off like. When we're playing this particular kind of deck, there's lots of cast triggers, right? You're getting like a lot of casts. Um, so in general, I think Ivy is just very good. So Ivy, the Gleeful Spell Thief, this is kind of one of those notorious cards that, you know, you mutate onto something else and then that copy goes onto Ivy. You can make that copy non-legendary and then you just kind of start amassing a lot of triggers and copying the mutate spells and you get an abundance of things right card that works really well with this is the vesuvian duplomancy as well 
So there's that. This one is the one where something gets targeted. Um, you know, and but you know, whenever we cast a spell with a single target, all the mutate spells are casting with a single target. You create a token that's a copy of the artifact or creature, except it's not legendary. So once again, you're just kind of amassing those copies. I think the best cards that kind of kind of give you like a lot of value from that is like a blossoming tortoise. It's just like a very good card to like kind of copy on to. Um, solemn, Secure, solemn Simulacrum is also very good in that manner. It kind of like keeps that kind of mana train going. Um, additionally, um, if you're going to go like kind of a landfall uh, character, so you get the Scootscorm, you get Anissa, you get Lotus Cobra, Asusa, oh, Tyler's Provisioner, of course. Is it AZ for Azusa? It is. It is. There she is. She's very good. And then Elysian. Primarily, I like to like kind of get like my landfall from the graveyard with these type of decks. Um, so Excavator is very good. I also like a Crucible of Worlds. Don't need too many, like probably like two of those is fine because we're also gonna be playing like a lot from the top of our deck, like Augur of Autumn is very good. I also like the reality chip for mutate and blue colors and just landfall in general. Um, what's the verbiage on this? Play additional lands, play additional. Let's see. Okay, Zeus's mini journeys. Druid class. Okay, that's that's a card. It is, it is, um, it is augmented for this play. Okay, so Augur or Oracle Noldaya. Hold up. Let's do this. Ancient Green Warden. That's kind of a card that would be interesting to kind of, uh, yeah, kind of mutate on too, actually. Get Rog Monster is very good. We're, we're, we're doing well, guys. We're doing well here. My god, I could even play Thalia. You gotta be shitting me. Can I? I wonder if I can mutate onto Thalia because she's a frog and a horror and not just a human. I'm so curious about that, guys. Okay. Okay. That's nice. Hmm. Now, what are some of like the kind of ways we can get into this? Um, just thinking of like kind of staply cards, and just maybe just kind of. I don't really play too much mutate with black, so this is kind of a different thing for me. I obviously, like um, reanimate sounds pretty good. And. Um, Obviously, if we want to get into the graveyard, we're going to want a Mesmeric Orb. <sighs> what else builds a graveyard really well? Wow, we're already coming up on like a full grip of cards, too. So we're going to have to like probably add some of that nice green ramp as well. We do have to kind of fix our mana too. So um, what's this another like kind of card that gets stuff into the graveyard? I mean, we're going to be playing fetch lands too. So I guess like one Mesmer Corp is not the worst. Just thinking maybe is there one more, like one more thing that we just kind of go over the top with to kind of build our graveyard. We have all these colors at our disposal, too. Well, I'll, I'll think about that one. I, I mean, I think a black market is just always very good. Yes, black market connection is a very good card for us.
we have that new ferocious mana dork too i'll get into that i just was thinking like is there anything else i mean what's kind of nice about the symbiote is it kind of puts land um it kind of loots as well so that's kind of an interesting factor that that does for black um Usually I have Undead Butler, I suppose. That would be like kind of a weird choice. We could mutate onto it. It might be weird, but I don't know. The Palantir is kind of interesting. I don't hate the Palantir. It's kind of a nice choice. A little card advantage. Okay, so that's good. All right, and now let's just get into some ramps. Um, for this particular deck, do we want our usual suite? We might. I think we might want our usual. I mean, usually the first sliver games I play is like very mid rangey, so this I guess would be like not like that. We not we not we might not be playing the Sunfalls and such. You know, we even get Ragavan in this. Um, let's get this one. Okay, Entis Restoration seems pretty good. We want like the big mama spells too. Oh my god. Sure. Sure. What does this do? Sure. I mean, Eerie Ultimatum, you got to be really geared up for that. And we're, we're kind of already uh, reaching our criteria here. <laughs> um, yeah, let's just, let's just, oh God, yeah, Genesis Ultimatum too. I don't know if we're going that big. You could go real big with this card. And I don't know if we're going to be building our graveyard that much. So I don't know about that. Immersion is safe. I think Ruinous is pretty cool, too. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see. Ferocious. This guy's a boss. And I think you want to play, like, the Karyatid, too. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think we're going to have to make, like, about now we're two over i think we still need to make about six cuts because because we're playing a land a landfall matters kind of thing so um i think this is kind of like maybe it is there any type of like like counter spells or anything i mean pact has been good mana drain is good Like, um, offer is good. Get all the uh, interaction here. Path to exile, swords, and um, three steps ahead, I suppose. Three steps. And then, um, God, there's so many good cards. I'm just kind of this percentile. We are in a major five card nonsense right now. <sighs> Silvala. Silvala. Ooh, she's so good. Rishgar. And uh, last March. Okay, so let's hit done on this one. And then we'll get a new look at it. I mean, for the landfall, you have to have like a, you know, a certain amount of lands, you know, and, um, I mean, it has to usually be much more than 40. So what do I have? I have 15... 24 40 so i have 40 you got to have at least like 46 at least 
would uh, be a good start. And the thing is, is that you can kind of get away with it by building your yard and playing the crucible effect. So like I said, like 46 would probably be a good start, right? Um, in terms of like our big spells, what is the emergent ultimatum can find us? I mean, it could, it could go through a lot of these really big bombs, like last March, it could get a ruinous, um, it could even get like a Rishkars, I suppose, put the opponent into a tough decision. So I don't think that's the worst choice. So I think these are good. Um, I like all these mutate cards here. Ancient Green Warden's a little bit heavy on the top. I can say goodbye to that. Um, this is Cavern Whisper. It's kind of a lower mutate cost. I like all those choices there. Like the Pouncing Shore Shark for the bounce, the Heron for cards, or Sterix. So then we have a Gitrog Monster, Brokos, Nethroi, Aluna. Those seem fine, fine there and solid. Pub Warden, I'm just maybe kind of not too jiggy on that one with a double white too. It's kind of a lock word. Hemophage, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, these are kind of fine. This one has a higher mutate cost. Um, comparable to, for instance, what else has a six mutate cost? Not many things have that high of a mutate cost. It's really not, really not the best. I mean, Archipelagor, I say, is more impactful than that. Than a, than a dirge bot, but we'll see. Maybe we'll let that one have a chance at least. Um, yeah, yeah, I like all this action here. Dahlia seems good. Solemn seems solid. Black Market, maybe it's so good though. Such good ramp. This does everything you want it to do. It's really hard to cut that card even though it doesn't really fit exactly. I might have to cut like um, the Dirge Bat and maybe like one of these recluses. You take costs for on that. Yeah, that's fine. So we're kind of getting into our mutate. We're, we don't want to get into that too much. We don't want to cut too much of our mutate, to be honest. Can we get by with one fanatic and just one karyotid? Or do we... I think we're pretty happy with these. I mean, I have a Lotus Cobra, so maybe a karyotid can go. Kind of a weird curve, like the ones to the twos. I mean, Pact, I would guess you'd probably see that as more like a five drop anyways. So maybe this is fine. We do need many more <laughs> cuts, unfortunately. Um, for green, we do love all these guys. They're kind of indispensable. Zagoth Mamba, maybe we won't, won't hate getting rid of that. Reanimate, yeah, that's a hell of a card. Offer you can't refuse. I'm gonna add the troll. And I might add Lorien Revealed too. Ogre. Ogre at the six. Lorian revealed. Do I not have it? Huh, am I not spelling it correctly? Oh, the mana cost, of course. There we go. I do always like Jawari in these landfall decks, too. Florahedron is usually very good 
for this. Tangled. Yeah, all the all the like the multi-face cards are very good. These are just the extra lands that we need to add, and we're just la adding them as spells. So, um, Valaget is pretty good. Okay, and um, I think we're pretty good with our lands now. There are some really good multi-face cards from the new set. There's a blue one that's very good. Let's see. Mimic. Hey, Mimic ain't half bad either. There's a Sink into Stupor. That's one super sweet. Seagate. So yeah, I have to, have to all, add all the uh, multi-face cards. Just kind of easy slots. Oh my god, you get to play all of them. I think I added Seagate already. Maria Shatter? Did I add Shatter Skull? Yeah. Maria's Call, Turn Timber, Symbiote. Oh my god, Agadim, of course. Well, we might have some work in front of us, so I'll definitely timestamp this, but um, let me hit done here. Get it back open. And I think we've added enough lands, so I just kind of think we maybe have to prioritize our, our mutate, kind of look at what mutate we like and kind of move on from there. So, I mean, the arc. I mean, we've added. I, I think I had the archipelago in there for my blue, my my non four color decks, because I didn't have access to all those cheaper black mutates. So I think it was just kind of like a a leftover remnant. So I don't think we'll be playing that. What's the chart harvester at? Mutate five. That's not too bad. Same thing with Brocos. These are all good. Okay. Wow. Nithroi has a huge mutate cost. Jesus. Roy, geez. It is like an ultimate Chad card, though, if you can, like, do that in return. It's total power, 10 or less, though. I mean, uh, it's a 5-5 five, five Death Touch Life linker for 5. Huh. I don't know if it fits our deck. That 5 mutate is disgusting. Mut I mean, honestly, this is, like, probably our, like, Are very uh, like most <laughs> most mutate that's acceptable, I suppose. Maybe like a six, and it's um, it's really just all right. I mean, we just have like just generic hits, you know. I mean, they could hit something good. Get rock monster is very good, especially sterics. Yeah, that's that's pretty much our. Our top tops. Yeah, these are all good. And there's Lorraine Revealed. Heron. How about the Liger? Is a three? Yeah, these are good. These three costs ones. Hemophage is good. Porcupert is good. Yep, solid. What are we at? 117. That's kind of brutal. Yeah, Oracle kind of goes in. Blossoming Tortoise is very good for what we're doing. Seems pretty solid. What do you do, snap decks? Whenever this creature mutates, it deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls, and you gain four life. The double striker is nothing to mess with, that's for sure. That and if you put that on a seven seven first sliver, you're gonna be doing some shit. So I don't mind that one. I don't mind the solometer. I think that's kind of our like kind of where we wanna be. Black Market makes a changeling, makes a treasure, draws a card, just an easy slot in. 
Dryad is very good for that extra land. Entis Restoration to reward us for playing high-powered creatures, which we should be able to do. Nissa, Scoot, Provisioner, Augur. This of all look and go. Hmm. Do we need Rishkar and Last March? I think so. Yeah, I think so. A little bit of a different deck here, guys. Not bad. Yeah, I love the Lord Dracus, Crucible, Palantir. Um, how about... We may just want to rely on our fetches to get into our landfall synergy. And is there a really big reason to build our yard too much? I'm not sure. Do we get a lot out of it? Don't know. Let's just cut these ones. Okay. I think we're doing our. Well. I think we're doing the work here. Polywog, Reality Chip, Mana Drain. Yeah, these seem very good, right? Yeah, Legosaur. Ivy, Shatter Skull. No. Seems like we're at a lot of cards. Let's see where we're at. We have lots of creatures. And we're at 40 lands plus. Let's see. Let's see how many multi face cards we have. We have. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Fifty-one. Yeah, that's that's pretty solid for landfall. Fifty-one seems right out of the money. <clears throat> I think I'd like to play like a Utopia Sprawl. And we have a decent amount of green, so I don't know if I want that pilgrim. I'd actually like mana dorks to produce green because I have a lot of green. Okay. Yeah, we have a very good bottom end here. We have a good counter magic. I think we're pretty solid here with Utopia Sprawl now. Symbiote is kind of a reducer, right? So I think like, I think it also is necessary because this these ones and twos are good with the triomes and such we're gonna be playing. So I think this is kind of solid. We're gonna probably play like three or four triomes. So, you know, we're just adding to our one drops. So I think this is, I think you really couldn't really touch this. I think glass pool mimic is very good here. Because we can copy like our Solemns and our Tortoises with it. Mm, maybe just the black market just has to go. That kind of hurts my soul though. Considering we can have just it on turn three, so that's not acceptable. Um, yeah, I'm liking all this, what I'm seeing here so far. How about Oracle? Is Oracle good here? It's going to be very good with our reality chip effects. I think what we got to do now is just kind of cut like the higher mutate creatures that like, yeah, like on a Luna, that's just got to go. How about this Harvester? That's kind of on a pricey boy. That's a good effect though for sacrificing creatures. I love Brokos. Brokos! Yes, Blake. Brokos, what do you think of Five Color Mutate? It's very good. Yes, Blake. People should watch the channel and, and make you money, Blake. Yes. So you can buy a Tesla. Thanks, thanks, Brokos.
<sighs> Cavern Whisperer. Yeah, yeah, these are all so good. I'm kind of in a wormhole now because I've added so many good, like, four mutates, you know. And these, these still exist, too, like these low-cost threes. So it's getting tough, guys. It's getting really tough here. But I think we did pretty good. Let's look at the curve. It always helps to look. I think, well, most of those are lands at the end, you know, if you put the these over here. It is pretty heavy on the seven drops, though. I mean, the seven drops are very good, though, and they're very last sliver orientated, so. Troll of Kaza Doom. Well, I think now I'm just going to have to, like, go from my own experience and kind of just see what cards I think for Mutate are worth it or not. And just in general for the cards that we have here. So, I mean, Last March of the Ents is very expensive, guys. Like, same with Immersion Ultimatum. They're definitely part of, like, a per particular game plan. And I think if we're going to go big with Landfall, I think it's they're just kind of right there on the precipice. So I think I think they're pretty good to keep. Little discard effect there. I guess so. I like the bouncing more than the discard. And I like the draw more. So I guess we say goodbye to that card. So far. What about snap decks? Yeah, it's a little bit of an interaction. Ramp, interaction, low mutate. Low mutate. Yep. Yep. Extremely low mutate. Absolute gas. Just an amazing card. Let's just say goodbye. And I didn't even say goodbye. It's still there in my heart. It hurts my soul. But it just doesn't really fit what we're doing. Exactly, I guess. Entus Restoration. Do we, do we care about this? Are we going to have a big are we gonna have big creatures? Yeah, I think so. I think it fits. Fits a landfall theme. Oh god, I forgot about aftermath analyst. Oh jeez. Well, we got rid of the black market. We added probably a two drop that we needed for our curve, to be honest. What are my favorite, like, multi-phase cards? Honestly, like, there people love this Balaget. I'm not, like, the biggest fan of it. Like, sometimes it's been good to me, but sometimes it's just, it's just not. I don't know. Out of these ones that are ones that I really like for multi-phase cards... I really like Hagramali, and I think that's fantastic. The removal spell in the land is amazing. Agadim is just crazy. Balagad, it's just not my fave. This one's pretty crazy, this new one, where you could just, like, return a spell to someone's hand. Return spell or a non-land permanent and opponent controls the owner's hand is pretty good. Glass pool, I just love that. I love Jawari, just fantastic. Florahedron is not, like, the best card. I mean, it's okay, so... Love Shatter Skull. Um, I like all these cards. Is Reanimate? I mean, I kind of was getting a Reanimate with like the Troll of Kazadoom kind of vibes. It's just like a crazy black spell. 
are we resurrecting anything like in particularly really good from our deck? I mean, most of these creatures don't really have enter battlefield triggers, to be honest. Other than I don't think most of them do. Um, they have mutate triggers, right? So I guess we can just say no to these. Probably say no to the Lorien revealed too. Okay, so now we're working. We're working good. We're moving. And let's see what else is going on here. So I still have seven cards to cut. And I think we're at 52 lands before. And like I said, the Crucible kind of shores that up. So I think I think if we can hit 48, we should be fine. So if there's a cut to be made, let's just put all our kind of lands over here. I mean, it looks like we clearly have more than 48. Oh, and while we're doing this, um, I just want to kind of like clarify a ruling that some people have about landfall. It's the verbiage play versus put, which also brings me another card that I must have in this deck. This is great. <clears throat> there it is, Uro. Okay, let's look at the difference between these two. Okay, so you have Uro. So this card says you may put a land, right? Versus an Oracle's text which says you may play an additional land. These are two specific verbiages that actually are a pretty significant ruling for landfall. So for instance, if I have like a, an Emiria's Call in my hand, and that's the only land that I have in my hand once Uro's trigger resolves, I may not, I may not put that card onto the, on that, the Emiria's Call onto the battlefield. Um, this in particular, as a multi-phase card, um, it has a top side and a back side. And the top side is um, what is seen in, in um, and that is basically like the what you can you can utilize right is always you can use the front side you know whether you're playing off the top of your library you're playing in your hand it also has that back side which is a land the um the land the 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 component of that is that basically that is a, a play option where you can play it as a spell or play it as a land so that's kind of where we are with Oracle Moldaya. So you can play an additional land on each of your turns. So you can play those Amiria's Call, those Jawaris from the top of your deck because you're playing either side. Okay, so that's how it gets away with that. Otherwise, like with the cards that say you may put, let's look at like, for instance, uh, Dryad. You may play. So these guys just get through all that. Uro doesn't though. If Uro said you may play um, a land card from your hand, then you would be able to do that. But it's put, so still a very good card, of course. Okay, so. I mean, we got some big bad spells in this deck. Ruinous Ultimatum, that's crazy. <clears throat> hmm. I don't know how often we're going to get to last March. I mean, the games might be over by then. Emergent Ultimatum, what am I going to get out of that? I could, like, probably get. I could get a Ruinous, I could get a Seagate Restoration, I get like a Rishkar's Expertise, so I guess that's not the worst. There's some pretty big spells we can still get, so that's maybe not the worst one. Um, I love all these guys, I love all this, and we have Thalia too, that's crazy. 
is really fun. Five mana, five colored mutate pile. I hope you guys are enjoying the content. I'm just kind of getting these inspirational ideas as I go. You know, it's fun. I know you guys love mutate too. I suppose like you're if you want to get like really nitty gritty, I mean an auger at two green is not is not the easiest to cast, right? Um really isn't the two green, but I think we'll make it work. I think it's worth it. Like the provisioner. The three drop does look a little bit heavy though. It looks like we're gonna be drawing a lot of three drops and four drops, so I think we probably need to take about a card or two from each of this, probably start with the threes. I don't think we're gonna like hate not having Entus Restoration in this deck. Still think we're gonna get by. Just having like a lot of like playing from graveyard, playing from the top of the library effects. We like Ramunap, Scooter, Augur, Necromama. Probably get rid of a four drop here. I guess we could say goodbye to one of the three drop. What does this do? Put a 1-1 counter on it? That's not very good. It's really though, it's really the reason why we have those and I sometimes make those mistakes is it because it has a, such a low mutate cost and it makes it worthwhile, even though the effect isn't that great, right? So, but we do have to get rid of one of them, I think. Um, so what is the worst one? I would probably have to say This could give something flying. Does this do anything other than that? It can act as removal. Because it's the Porky Paradise ago. Yeah, we like the flying effect, of course. Flying is good. That's just like a massive buff. It's pretty good. That's better. That's looking a little bit better. Probably still need to get a rid of a three drop here. Or two. Probably one of each, actually. Um, I think like we could go with like either a blossoming tortoise or a solemn. So I think we're just going to say goodbye to the solemn and probably say goodbye to, I mean, how many, how many ways do we have to play off the top of our library? We have the Oracle, we have the reality chip. I think we do require the auger. Yeah, I think the auger is essential. I suppose the stupor land can go. I think we have enough counter magic here. Okay, we're getting very close. Um... I mean, I feel like you got to play this kind of card for a five color pile, like these ruinous ultimatums, and I think you got to go for it, right? So I think that stays. Hmm. This is a three mana mutate, right? That's very good. This is a four mana mutate, five mana mutate. 
Surely we want the. I know this is a sacrifice, but I want I, I want the four mana mutate. I really don't care what it does. It can't be that bad in the black colors. Yeah, this is this is fine. Hey, there's all our mutate cards. How fantastic! That's very cool how it like organized that. I don't even think I did that myself. How fun! Well, thanks, Arena. You're you're really helping me out here, looking at my mutate action. Obviously, Ivy is just insane in this deck. Um, yeah, I like all this one mana ramp. It's very good. Three freaking cards. Ah, you know what? Thalia is just such a strict improvement on... Oh. But you can't play from the top of your deck. Wow, these two... Oracle and Thalia get together, and it's just like a really, really strong <laughs> situation for us. And you get... And you get the Girog? These are all, like, crazy together. Um, Honestly, I think we're going to have... A, a, I know this is a very good card... We're gonna. I don't think we're gonna suffer on cards too much. I'm not. I think we're gonna have plenty of gas. It looks like we're gonna have um, plenty of cards to look at. Um, I think we're still gonna want those ultimatums. Is it just lands that we get into now? That we did like all our card cutting, or our card cutting. So let's see, we have 16. The mana base might be really difficult for this to like kind of set up. 15, uh, 24, 40. 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. 47, that's, that's kind of like the bare bottom. We wouldn't want to cut anything else really or, or do we count Jawari? I don't think we did let's see one two three four five six seven eight yeah 48 is kind of with the multi-phase cards is kind of exactly where you want to be and I think we've kind of exhausted like all the things that we wanted to do here so it's kind of tough now five colors is tough guys tough to build a deck around what would you cut right here if you're still watching what would you cut <sighs> hmm This is symbiote, huh? Yeah, probably is. Okay, I think we're doing good again. Uh, one more cut, huh, guys? I don't want to cut the removal. Oh, I love this deck. I love it so much. <clears throat> What's amazing about these five colors is you get these low cost mutates like it's kind of incredible. You get all these like 
really sweet ones. Even the parcel bees, little mutate, man. Yeah, even the fanatic is really good, right? Oh, that's such a good card. These just really become insane together. All of these. Provisioner even gets crazier. And this guy is insane, super insane. All of this is just absolutely bananas. I'm just looking at those ultimatums. I want to at least try them. And we get to play the first sliver too, which is incredible. What an cr incredible commander this is. Just can like recast it over and over. It gets killed. You just keep casting it. You know, this might sound crazy, but I'm just going to give it a pact. I don't know if we're a pact deck. All right, guys, I think I got a sweet deck here. So let's, uh, oh, it's, it's going to be at the top now. I just have to add lands, which is going to be a nightmare. So, um, yeah, like I said, like probably about like three or four triumphs here. You don't want to go too overboard with them. So there's the Atora. Make sure we get all the green triomes. So we have quite a heavy green 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 curvature here. And green blue. A little bit of green red. Commercial District. Stomping Ground. Do we still want all the Triumphs? I don't know if we want them all. I don't know if we want them all, guys. What does World Tree do for us? God Cards. I don't think we have too many gods. That is an interesting card though, for fixing our mana. Are we a believer in the world tree? Huh, maybe. Never really tried it before. I don't really like tapped lands that just add, color, add green though for a while. Let's keep this train going. Let's do it with a green blue. Let's get all our surveilling going. Spars headquarters. Yeah, I'll play that one too. Let's see, green white. Portico. So we're just adding like our nice shock lands here. I did a green blue already. Yep. And how about some red, red blue? Sure. And Xander's Lounge. Oh, five triumphs. I don't know. 
It'd be a lot of triumphs. Dang, there's so many of them. We will get the surveil land though. Um, what else? We do need lots of green, so let's look at like the green. Do we do green white yet? We did. How about green red? Yeah, I think so. Green black. Yeah, let's do green black. I don't think I have the surveil lands for this, but I should have the shock lands. Oh, I do have a surveil land. Let's get that one in. Do I have the um? God, do I not? Have, oh, here it is. Overgrown tomb. Fantastic. Okay. Now we want like the search, search lands. Oh, Boseju. That's pretty sweet. Bloodstained Mire. Um, yeah, we could get a couple of these hideouts too. That seems like a good one. What's the colors I get for this? Forest Plains Island. Yep. Yeah. And we'll probably get the um, Obscura. Obscura one too. We might have enough basics for a Fable Passage. Hopefully. There we go. Riveteers. That's fine. I'm really focusing on the forests. This. I think I have polluted delta. Did I get it already? Yeah, we did. So that's kind of the extent of the search lands I have, I suppose, now. And then we just want our channel lands, right? And, uh,. That's that's kind of it, guys. So I just have to cut. I have to do the, what, 6, 12, 18, 6, 12, 18. About six lands from each of these. Looks like we're about there. This will go to three. Oh, yep. We surely want to play at least one basic mountain, right? Now, with all these fetch lands, with cards like, I think it's okay. I think we're going to... I don't think we'll run out. We'll see if we run out. Um, uh, we could also get rid of like some of these ones that maybe just aren't too impactful, like Sokin's on. Egondra is like pretty good, but let's just let's just up up our basics a little bit. Um, let's up our forest count. That was pretty high, and um, I think it's our forest island. It looks like. All right, I think we have a crazy deck here. Um, so this is the last sliver. The first sliver, first sliver. Okay, so um, is it done? And we'll just start the video from here, from the timestamp. All right, everybody, welcome to uh, my video. Um, this is the second part of the video, and uh, this is the deck that I just constructed. It's a, a five color mutate deck with the first sliver as our commander. So there's a card right there. Fantastic. Plains, blue, swamp, mountain, forest, five color command, five costed commander as well. Legendary creature sliver, cascade. Sliver spells you cost half cascade. Well, the sliver will obviously give itself that cascade and, you know, we'll get value from that. We're also utilizing it to get into our color pie here. Just the things that stand out to me so far are like the cards like Thali and the Girog monster that's going to let us like play a ton of lands uh, from our hand um, and from our library with those conditions met, like for instance with like Oracle of Moldaya, Augur of Autumn. We definitely have a good landfall synergy here. And then of course we have our awesome Mutate Suite. So we have like a whole variety of 
all the five color mutate cards. We have like our Bro Coast Apex or Forever. We got our Auspicious Sterex. We got all these really sweet ones. We have all the really nice low cost mutate cards as well, like a Lord Dracus. These are just indispensable. The low mutate, the better. Um, C Dash or Octopus is one of those other very low mutate costs. If we can start mutating onto other things, like for instance, we get creature going with creature going with Ivy, and you know we're just going to get the value overload from all our mutates. Um, of course, the landfall synergy is just very nice in general. So I'm going to have some big big spells on the top end too, like Ruinous Ultimatum and Emergent Ultimatum. So overall, I'm really excited for the list, and let's just roll it in. All right, what's gonna happen? What, what are they? What are we gonna get matched up against? That is the question. Oh no, they can't find an opponent for me because my deck is too whacked out. <laughs> it's too crazy. It'll probably put me against the bot then, right? What are we going to get? What are we going to get? Oh, you know what I forgot is the new stupid uh, bird. Oh, shit. Uh, he's got to go in here. The um, Nadu. Yeah, Nadu. Oh, shoot. I forgot about the bird. He's a rare. I don't know if I even have him in my wild card selection, guys. So I don't even know if we could play. I don't even know if we could even have access to it right now, but... Surely, uh, Nadu has to go in, uh, absolutely. So, I'll just have to, like, laboriously go through, like, another... Eh, or Traxa. This is just garbage. I have nothing here to do. Okay, that's better. Um, but what do we do? I guess the diplomacy de de has to go. Kind of nasty, huh? I would like to save the fetch land for the Lotus Cobra. Um, this could be like, I think we want it to be blue because we have like a lot of white blue. I could have three mana from this. So not quite enough to play our tortoise. So I mean Lotus Cobra is really spooky with the last sliver. I mean, we could also go into the last sliver if they tap out. I mean, it's really up to us what we want to do. Okay, that's fine. We can still get into our tortoise if they don't counter it. I'm not too afraid of this. I'll keep the Boseju available. Uro's very good. Let's just do this first, though. Oh wow, they are going to counter this. So very counter heavy um, attracts of deck. I mean that's fine. I I'm okay with playing against like a counter heavy attracts of deck. I'm not. They did top that, so I suppose they're just gonna do it again, or they're just trying to work up to attracts. Uh... Yeah, let's try it again. Okay, they're digging now. You 
you know, I probably should have cracked this first to kind of ensure that I would have had access to that. So that was a misplay by myself, so don't do that. Don't misplay like me. Chimil. I can kill that. Let's see if I have any, like, black red lands. I, I don't think I did. I don't think I added those in. I don't even think I looked too much into black. I do. I'll, I'll definitely have some um, triumphs here. Yeah, so I guess we just go into black, blue. I mean, they will have a tracks on board, so that's kind of spooky. Gain a little bit of life, and then see what they get off the Chamil. Hopefully nothing too impactful. What's that? Okay, Rejuvenator. Okay, they bricked. Um, let's see, can we do Uro and the Sliver? Uh, not quite, huh? Hmm. Alright, I guess we just do this then. Sure, a halfling. <laughs> That's funny. Um... I can kill that bow Seiju, or that Chimil. So we'll do that. What's this fetch me? Forest? Cool. Takanuma? No. Um, I think we might be able to Uro twice. Maybe. With Halfling, right? Wow, is that like ultimate greed that they did that? Did they not have the mana? They didn't have the mana. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, what we want to do is we want to do this. No, please do not tap my blue land yet. You're going to be blue. Yes. Um, blue. Sweet. Um, let's get rid of this fool. This fool, this fool, and uh, this guy. Ooh. Maybe I should have not killed all of my creatures out of there. My bad. If I play this, do I get to fetch with this thing? Oh, a regular elf. I was hoping for an aftermath analyst there, guys, but I didn't get it. Um, Atrax is very scary, guys. What can I say? What can you say about it? Seven seven life link, death touch, draws like a million cards. Yeah, very spooky. Not the scariest. Uh, I mean they get the Kira, blah blah blah. That's extremely frightening. Oh no, show and tell. Shit. I didn't even see that. Oh man, we got a really spicy player here, guys. Dark Ritual? To your relic? Sure. 
Uh, we're going to have to do some uh, interesting things with Uro. Oh, we can bounce the Atraxa. We could bounce this. I mean, this thing's just an 8-8. Eight, eight. Um, we're going to have to start mutating, so... What do we want to mutate on to? We can get flying to the first sliver. That would probably be best. Flying to Uro would be very good too. So let's mutate on to Uro. Sure. Under. Oh, this doesn't give me flying. Oh boy, I messed up. Well, probably should have went on the sky. Under. I guess it's gonna be the Boseju. I really need to kill this stupid thing. I think we have to swing with this guy to try to get him back in the command zone. Let's just try this. I need to get in the aftermath analyst too, so. Um, I think I had plenty of forest, so let's just be safe. I still have Mystic, Elvish Mystic, I think, in the deck, too, so I could maybe hit that. Ooh, an Oracle. That's an interesting card. I am in attacks, though, so I, I will be able to still play Oracle off of this. Okay, the Tortoise is down. Growth Spiraling. A duplomancy. That's interesting. So I guess they're gonna go right into casualties or attracts again. They still can play casualties too, so they'll probably kill my arrow, right? I'm not sure. The arrow is very valuable though, so maybe I should have. I don't know. Is this a cast trigger? Whenever you cast this spell. Okay. Time warp. Oh, fuck you. And they emoted me too. And what a joker. Go play your kindergarten card somewhere else. Um, we definitely want the Nadu, jeez, that's a crazy card. Oh, there he is. I got it. I got the rare wild card. Let's go. Uh, hello. Oops. Okay. So 
So the shuffler was telling me that we're playing a lot, like too many three and four drops. Probably true. Um, just based on like kind of the curve that we were getting from the couple of the draws that I had saw. Um, I mean, I think our landfall position is strong. I feel like I feel like all that's good. Are we gonna hate? not having a glass pool mimic available it's probably one of our better like multi-phase cards to be honest um some of those mutate cards kind of like stuck in the hand though like you know this is a higher mutate so maybe we just say bye to the necro panther sorry necro panther um and i think we're good i think we could be going we might want to I don't know if we can add, I mean, we can add like an arcane signet because just because our mana is like kind of sucks. I mean, the blossoming tortoise was just absolutely phenomenal in that game. I suppose we could get rid of one of these bigger bigger costed uh, mutate kais. Brokos just has a special place in my heart, so there's just no way, there's just no freaking way I can ever cut that card. Um, it's probably gonna be like the, the, the piercer. Okay, cool. All right, I think it's it. I think this will be the deck I post, so that means that we're approaching the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully we'll get like maybe another video, another kind of encore video for this one because I really like this kind of concept. So uh, I don't know if the last lever is like the best like five color conduit for this deck. I'm sure in EDH we're going to be able to get into some some other choices. You know, I mean, we don't have a, all the card pool. I'm sure like there'll be something that will synergize with Landfall, for instance. It's just going to make this really go for it, you know. So we'll just keep we'll keep searching around. We'll find we'll find what makes it work, you know. Yeah, if you guys have any suggestions for like a five color commander that you think would be All right. There we go. Easy game. If you guys can think of one for me, um, that'd be great. To kind of like let this keep let this let's let it roll i mean i guess omnath just in general should be in the 99 too now that i think about it but um i mean there's so many cards that can go in right okay very similar hand to the last last one we just played um we could probably find the green blue uh surveil land here to start Thought sees, okay, sure. Maybe take my analyst or a Susa. Probably should take either one of those. The counter spell, not the right choice. Do I have a green blue? I need some sort of surveil off this. I guess it's going to be the portico. Swamp. Swamp. Sure. Sure. Okay, some good mills there for our analyst, of course. This is play, right? So we could play the mimic down as a land. Okay, Punin is doing all the nasty things to us, it seems. Looks like they're gonna remove my analyst here. Oh, cling to dust, sure. Ooh, Scoot Swarm. Let's see here. Well, 
Well, if we find a green source, we can just start kind of unloading with Azusa. That would be kind of nice. Or we could just go right into our analyst and, you know, get some value off of that. And we are playing mono black, so they're kind of nasty people. Trespasser. Wow, they're really getting to my graveyard. They're just basically, like, uh, muting my uh, Azusa here. So this would get me one land. It's pretty bad. We should have definitely got the Scoot Swarm down on that turn. That was a... But, I mean, we can get Azusa down if... Or, I mean, Augur, I guess, this way. If they don't take out Azusa. But they've had every answer so far, so... Tavriel is a pretty cool commander, really. Does some... You gonna... Okay, so, well, so there. Please don't kill my Azusa. <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay. So, there we go. Here we go. Here we don't go. Ah, there we go. There's the juice. Okay. I suppose I was supposed to get my uh, arcane or my uh, scoot swarm down before I did that. <laughs> oh boy, I'm sort of a blunderer sometimes, guys. Well, so we missed out on the scooty, the scooty boy. That's what you wanted to kill, not my Azusa. I got another one. Oh no, opponent. You must have a meat hook massacre right now, my friend. Good luck with so sorry. Forgot meat hook massacre, blood on the snow. Draw three cards? What kind of joker is that? Oh no, they have they didn't get the answer they were looking for. Okay, they killed my scoot swarm. Wow, they have everything. Dark ritual, no. Oh, okay. What else is gonna happen? Are you sure you want to do that attack opponent? You may do that. I think I have to do the analyst because I'm kind of bricking on um, the top of my library here. Eh, let's go right in the sliver. Man, we're getting all the emotes today. What did I do to deserve this? <laughs> Please don't kill my stuff. <laughs> The one ring. Oh god. I I think mono black brawl is like the most amazing this though. Like you can play like the thought seizes, like it's just like a absolutely like insane insane stuff, you know. Sure, I will just go ahead and surveil, of course. I do not need that. I um, can go ahead and play that. And I think we're ready to uh, keep the land train going right now. Let's 
it only costs one. Oh, wow. Well. This guy. So, how much mana do I have? Oh, I can play that creature off the top of my deck? What can I kill? Can I kill anything with this thing? Holy shit, I could kill it. Um, how much mana do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five. Or I could go right into the analyst and get all that value. That is a tough decision, guys. You're going me, but I have a decision to make here. Can I mutate this? I can. I'm going to go under. Kill Davril. Oh, shit. Well, I mean, I can cast it again, I guess. <laughs> uh, yo. God, this Davriel is really annoying to play against. Oh, did they have one ring of protection there? So they didn't really need to block, did they? Huh. They are a card Andy, though. That is for sure. They have languishes and... Oh, man. They're just breaking huh, on their board wipes. You want me to fight? Oh, they killed my scoot swarm again. I'm at 21 life. Ooh, I get to mutate again. Sweet. We're gonna go um, under. Oh my god, I could also be copying Snapdax. Ah, shit. My bad. Oh shit, okay, now I definitely want to copy Snapdax. So, do I have a mana for this? Yes. Ooh. I think we want over now, right? I think they're dead. Oh, <laughs> Ben! Big Ben? Oh no, Ben! I'm sorry, Ben. Oh, Mono Black. You didn't have it today. Oh no. What's that? A shiny thing. Um, hey. Hey, guys. The first liver was not bad, huh? Got into our snap decks and we were just off to the off to the races. Ah, oh, was the first liver goaded? Maybe. Maybe it's goaded, bro. She. All right, guys. Have a wonderful day or summer. Whatever it is you're doing. Bye-bye.